What's up everyone? It's your girl Stephanie and in today's video I am sharing with you my new favorite hobby, complete obsession and that is beaded jewelry in particular. I've been making a lot of necklaces. It's just so fun and really easy once you get into it. Um, so in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the tools that you're going to need, the hardware, of course the beads, and then I'm going to be showing you how I plan out a necklace and make it and like do all the finishings. I'm gonna show you a couple techniques. So the very basic thing you would need to just like finish a necklace and put the closure on. And then I'm gonna show you some like extras that you would add on just to make it a little bit more refined. I would really recommend if you're just starting off not to be just purchasing a bunch of stuff because honestly it can really add up. I've definitely, <laughs> I spent a good chunk of change on, on beading, uh, that's for sure. So if you're just starting off, I have some kits that I initially purchased from Amazon that were pretty cheap and have pretty much everything that you would need in order just to jump off. And I'm also gonna link down below, you know, all the Etsy shops that I've been purchasing from because I, I in particular, have been liking a few different shops. Before we get into it, um, make sure to stick around to the end because I actually have a little bit of a giveaway idea, pretty cool. And if you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood, no matter your true pronoun or gender identity, Come join the family. All right, let's get started. All right, everyone. So right now I'm gonna be going through the tools, hardware, the beads, obviously, uh, before getting into actually making the necklace. These are all important, at least to understand some of the basics and to get some of these things down. I'm gonna let you know which things I think are necessary just for a very basic necklace as well. So here we have a couple of these little um, pliers here. You can get these online in kits. I actually got this one in a Amazon kit, of course, like I said before, I will link everything down below. This kit was actually pretty useful. It has a, a few different things in there, including like these little tweezers that are great for picking up teeny, tiny little beads, which I have been using. You can see I have two different sizes here in terms of these pliers. This one right here is a little bit more white on the inside. It's flatter and this is great for really like flattening things out and then we have this one over here that is pointier and more detailed for uh, kind of getting in there and doing a little bit more detail work, obviously. You'll see me use both of these. I would say if you're gonna choose one, I mean, a lot of times they come together in kits and they're not that expensive. If you were to choose one of these, I would say get the more precise one because you can still do a good amount of like flattening and hardcore work with this one. I just have a pair of little scissors here and this is great for cutting obviously the threads and stuff. I feel like I wanna get another pair though that's a little bit more precise than this, um, but for now this is good. We have just a little binder clipper. Very important, you wanna just grab something like this that you can put the thread into so while you're threading your necklace, you won't have the bead just falling out the other side, which like 100% has happened to me on a couple occasions. Um, you know, what? I'll talk about this first actually. This is a crimping tool, and I don't know if you can see, let me try and get up in there. There are a few different ridges in here, and I will show you how to use this, but this is not necessary. Uh, if you are just starting out. But if you're trying to get a little bit more professional, this is a great tool. And in terms of the thread, I would just 100% recommend this one right here. This is Softflex uh, beading wire. This is a not tying stainless steel and it is nylon coated. I have it in the fine size you can see i don't have that much left i actually purchased a couple more of these you don't need a needle when you're using this you're just threading it directly on here and those teeny tiny beads will hold and it is so strong just really easy to use um you don't have to deal with like yeah threading any needles or anything like that so this stuff is awesome oh you know what actually let me talk about this mat right here too this is just like a nice uh, anti-slip mat. This one's from Beadsmith. And then the other thing that was really useful, has been really useful to me is this tray right here. And this just helps me to plan out all of my necklaces. And 
Um, obviously you can see I have my measurements here and I laid all out there. So this thing has been great and has little like areas to put things in there. Before, honestly what I did, and I do have a clip of it from when I tried to film this previously, I just had a piece of cardboard that I cut and I pretty much created this for myself um, with three pieces of cardboard pretty much. And then there's like a little end piece there. But because I've been making so much, I decided to go ahead and grab this. And I believe it was just like $4.99 or something. Okay, so in terms of hardware and closures and everything, so this is uh, something that I bought from Amazon right when I started. And then here is my own little kit that <laughs> I have put together just from loose things that I have purchased from online, um, a lot of Etsy shops or at the beading store. So the things that you are 100% going to need, your closure here. So this is like a little lobster, what's it called? Lobster closure? I think I'm not saying this correctly. This is something that you can get in the kit right here. But the ones that I have been getting, purchasing uh, for, you know, my more professional stuff is stainless steel. So it is more expensive but I find that it just it's just higher quality. Second thing that you're really going to need um, are jump rings. Jump rings are these little rings here, I can show you, that are not soldered shut. This is to connect your like little lobster clamp to your necklace. So the jump ring is important. This other ring I'm gonna show you, you can use a jump ring I feel like, it would not be a big deal, but I also like having now, these rings that are soldered shut. So there is no opening and so just no chance of it, you know, accidentally getting ripped open. And finally, what is necessary for the style of necklace that I am making and how I do my closures is uh, crimp beads. So I have a couple different ones here. These ones, this is what you're gonna use to close off your uh, necklaces to make sure that the beads don't go everywhere and to connect the rings in there. So here's one. This is the one that actually came with that Amazon kit. And I have been using these and these also work well. These are the extra things too. Um, these are called crimp covers. It's a little thing that you uh, put around the crimp to make it look like a bead and to finish it up a little bit nicer. But again, that one's not necessary. So I think necessary things are the, the little closure here, jump ring, crimp bead. If we're gonna go very, very basic. Beads. Okay, wait, <laughs> this is too, too money to show at once. Right when I started, I got some of these packs from Amazon, of course. I had these, like, I have another pack of these humongous ones here. These are just, these are called seed beads. I think there's other words for them too, but I just call them seed beads. And they are made out of glass. These ones are plastic ones, these are not seed beads. But these little kits are great. And I made my very first necklaces, including my own name necklace. This was one of my very first creations um, with little jade beads and the seed beads. So if you're just starting off, these little kits are so good. And also for your Letters and numbers and stuff. These are acrylic alphabet beads, different kind of beads here. Again, from Amazon, I purchased this just to like, it's good to try out and see what you like. So here we are at the advanced seed beads now. Now these are the ones that I bought individually at a beading store. They are teeny, teeny, tiny ones and they come in little packs like this. And at beading stores, they'll also do like variety packs. And then I ended up just dumping, get, getting a couple of these things and um, dumping them into these containers. So those are the little seed beads. And then now we're jumping into the main beads here, which I have been using, which are jade and pearls. Six millimeter, six millimeter jade, and then four millimeter jade, depending on, you know, what kind of necklace you're trying to make. And in terms of the pearls, we have these really teeny tiny ones. I think this is three to three and a half millimeter. These are just so cute. And I like to put these for name necklaces now. We have these round ones, which are really nice. I actually made um, a, 
bracelet for Michael's mom out of these. And these are the pearls that we're going to be using today. Five to seven um, millimeter freshwater white pearl rice shape. So this one is so cute. We're gonna be using that today. And then I have all these fun other little beads. These are made out of polymer clay. We have all different kinds up here. And then um, I ended up just buying some of these, like I think they're like resin or something. These fun little charms, because I want to play around with earrings. And I bought these little soju bottles to try and make Jen some like a soju bottle um, pair of earrings, because I thought that was funny. Wow, so many beads that you can play around with. Love beading. <laughs> okay. So it's time to stop messing around and get into what you're really here to see, which is, oh my gosh, how many, how many minutes or hours are we into this already? If you are making this for a stranger, look at some pictures of them. See how thick their neck is. If you're not quite sure, put an extender chain on there. Just grab a necklace that you like the fit of, you know, and see how long it is. So this one total is, 15 and a half. So I'm just gonna go for that. I feel like a lot of my friends, if it fits on me, it'll it'll fit on them. Also with these little polymer clay beads, you really have to see where the holes are because um, sometimes it's angled. Oh, you know what? Okay, so this one cannot be in the middle because it is really crooked. This one might honestly, this one's the best one to be in the middle because it's the straightest through. And this one is kind of crooked here. Does that look cute? I think that looks cute. So now we have that planned. Um, as per this necklace right here, I have three of these rice shaped pearls in between each of the polymer clay beads. So let's just open this guy up. It's like a big old ad for Beadsmith right now, I feel like. <laughs> they got the monopoly on your beading accessories, okay? It's kind of hard to film this and beat at the same time, okay? Usually my body would be like straight up against here. I really apologize if things are out of focus too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Obviously these beads are not gonna be the same exact size as these ones. You just add some later. Put it on your neck, see how it fits and keep going from there, but just always keep in mind that there's gonna be you know, d there's gonna be a little bit of space here with your closures and whatnot. Here I have my string, I'm gonna grab my clip and I'm just gonna clip it. Very secure. Here are the little seed beads we're gonna be using. So cute. This was a mix pack, it was 50 cents for these beads right here. I'm gonna start off with the seed bead and I'm gonna just do every other is gonna be a seed bead. You wanna make sure to check up on your previous. I have thought I was in the zone and I did the entire necklace and realized like, you know, in the middle, I missed a seed bead and it, it bothered me so much I had to just redo the whole thing. So I even did the closures by the way, that wasn't even just like kind of finished. I had finished the entire thing with the closures. So that meant I had to re, um, re-thread the entire necklace because I didn't have room to do the closures. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not a professional. This is my hobby. I learned all this stuff, like everything I'm about to show you in terms of like the closures from YouTube. Um, this is my method. So now make sure you put the seed beads in between and we got, we're facing up. There we go. You can see where I'm going with this. Looking real cute already. Oh, I love this one. I love this design. I'm gonna go ahead and just like string the rest of them. The sun is setting right now, y'all. <laughs> okay, here is now everything that I'm going to use to close this little guy up. So we have one lobster closure. We have two soldered rings. So these ones are completely closed. One jump ring. That's the one that has the opening. Two of these crimp beads, the crimp covers, and two little extra beads that I started doing that are just kind of like decorative. Okay, so here's what I just strung onto here. First, I strung on 
the decorative bead, then the crimp bead, and then one of the soldered rings. And now I'm gonna flip it around and put the string back into the crimp bead and then also that decorative little bead right there. And now since this is the first side, you don't really have to worry about pulling it through and making it really like nice on this side. What you wanna do is make sure that the strings do not cross over within the crimp bead. You wanna have them be parallel to each other. And then you just kinda pull it to where you're comfortable. Here are my crimping pliers. So up top, you can see when it's closed, um, there is a hole up top. That's the first hole that, that's the first thing that you put it through. Then the second area, you can see on the right side, there's like a little divot in. It creates a little divot in the <laughs> crimp bead. And then you flip it 90 degrees and you put it back up in here and it just crushes it all together. I don't know if I'm explaining myself well there at all, but straight up when you buy these pliers, it's it's on the instruction, it is very, very easy. Okay, so just go along with me here. Now I'm scooching it, putting it through the second. And now flipping it 90 degrees, putting it back into the first hole and crushing it. That was a little bit too aggressive. Doing a little test here where I'm just tugging on it a bunch, seeing if it moves, which it will not, honestly. It's very strong up in there. I'm gonna grab this little cover. It's like a little C-shaped guy. And I'm just gonna place it on top of here. <laughs> we're just gonna use the big guys. And we're going to smash it kind of together, trying to close it up. Close it up. I'm gonna go in with the little guys and kind of just smash it this way. It's a lot of like finagling with it until he's all the way closed. Might make it a little bit nicer a little bit, but now that the little cover's on there, this, the first side's a lot easier. I just kind of snip it with a little bit of the string some people, oh shoot, some people like really leave a lot of string left and they string it back into those beads. Like I haven't been doing that because I feel like it comes out or has a chance to come out. So now we're just placing it so. Here we go. That beads like that. Now we're going to do the same exact thing on the other side, but we got to be a little bit more careful and you want to leave like a little bit of, you don't want to like do it like super taut. You want to have like a tiny, tiny bit of room and that honestly, I'm still learning how to do that properly. It's just coming with practice. Again, decorative bead, crimp bead, soldered ring. And now I'm just going to, oops, pull it. like my aunt and I want to make sure there's like a little tiny bit of the wire left and I'm going to crimp it. Here we have the necklace without the closure on there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab the jump ring with the hole and I'm just pushing and opening with my own fingers and grabbing the little claw guy, putting it on there. And then um, I'm grabbing this side. What I just did is I now have the jump ring on both the soldered ring and the claw lobster clamp. Did I just say claw? Okay. I need a white claw. Um, and now I'm gonna take these little pliers and I'm gonna make them go past each other because I wanna make this smaller than the size. And I am going to honestly just mess with it until 
it makes itself a nice little ring. So you can go inside, and that's why these like little pliers are so great, because you can do a lot of little detail work. You can push them together. There is that little closure. And now, we can close it up. <laughs> yeah. It's my fanfare sounds. Here we have the <laughs> completed necklace. How cute, so cute is this little guy here. I love it. So say you don't have this, <laughs> this tool to really help you seal it up. Honestly, just doing it totally flat is also, it's really secure. I had been doing it with two of them in a row, but I have other necklaces where I just did it totally flat and it like, it's, it hasn't budged and I feel like it won't. Here we have a little crimp bead looped on a piece of wire, just like you would do with the little, you know, ring over here. Want to make sure that the threads are parallel. And I just grab this big flat guy and give it a good smash. Really get in there. <laughs> Shaking the whole table. It is like just completely flat. It's really not budging. It's like not going anywhere. If you don't have that other crimp thing, just do this. You could do it with the cheaper beads too. I lined up two of these in a row and did it and it worked perfectly fine. See, you can see here I have two of those. One, two. I kind of just lined it up. I don't really flatten them out. One, two. It's not as professional looking, but it totally works. Here's my like intro to beading and here I am at like intermediate <laughs> with my little like, you know, crimp beads, crimp cover, crimp bead covers and whatnot. This necklace, I think it's so cute. Um, I have made one for myself and for a few friends at this point. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was not too long and you got some uh, good information out of it. I just love beading so much and it's just a wonderful reason too for me just to physically make something for my friends. I've been, really been enjoying that and being able to kind of in a way like reconnect with people. Uh, quarantine has just been so crazy. Obviously I haven't been able to visit my friends in San Francisco and even my friends in LA, you know, a lot of them I'm not seeing in person. I'm only seeing a few people. In, in person, so it's nice to be able to think, okay, I'm gonna make this for my friends and then I get to send it off to them and they can have a nice little gift, a little surprise. Speaking about gifts, uh, I had an idea for a giveaway and I feel like I'm gonna do more in the future because obviously like I'm not selling these necklaces or I don't know, I'm not selling them yet. Uh, they take a long time, you know, some of them take a couple hours each. It is very time consuming, so it would be difficult for me to make a lot to sell or something. With the election coming up, I thought it would be cool to do a giveaway um, to people who have registered to vote or have already voted. I feel like there's no real way for me to monitor ask for proof of this so pretty much i think i'm gonna post it on my instagram so by the time this video is posted i will post a picture or something on my instagram with all the information of the giveaway i'm sorry for people who are not in the united states but you know i, I want to kind of hype up anyone right now who is just trying to make a difference and uh who are being active politically you know because it really does matter if you haven't registered to vote or if you are not in the united states i'm really sorry but please do not enter this giveaway. I don't wanna pick out some winners and have it be somebody like out of the country because that's that's just gonna be a bummer and they're not gonna get the necklace. I'm just rambling right now, but just check out the Instagram post. I have all like the rules and everything there, but if you've registered to vote um, or have voted already, I will be giving away five custom necklaces. Before when I was trying to shop around for necklaces like this, you know, some places, I think they're selling them for like 80, 70, 80 bucks and I'd be like, whoa, like that's 
way too expensive. If you try, think of like the materials themselves, it's nowhere near there in a singular necklace, but a lot of time goes into it. So much preparation. And in terms of all the materials that need to be bought, like I spend a lot of money now at this point on beading <laughs> um, or a good chunk of change. A lot goes into making a singular necklace. So if you are going to, you know, purchase something like this, just know that it's somebody sitting there hand beading these things and it takes a long time and it's a lot of effort goes into it, a lot of workmanship. So just keep that in mind when it comes to jewelry like this, even though the materials themselves in your necklace might not add up to that much money, there's a lot that goes into that single necklace. So just wanted to say that. I'll link down below at least one other jeweler um, that I know of who's kind of making these, these kind of necklaces. Um, they are Rocky Studios, really beautiful stuff. Um, yeah, just support small businesses right now too because it was, it was a crazy time that we're living in. Um, yeah, I feel like I have so much to say about this, but thank you so much for watching. I really love y'all so much. I hope you get into some really great hobbies during this time. If you have anything that you think I should get into, please let me know. Very, very into doing some little meticulous things on my hands right now. With all that said, uh, I really love y'all and I hope you are staying safe out there, doing well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.